On this planet, there are many large, powerful birds. But as well as this, there are also smaller birds that often fall prey to many other predators. To help defend themselves from predators, these birds have many different defensive strategies. And as I've covered many times on their channel before, some of these birds are even toxic. The hooded pitahui is probably the most famous toxic bird. And as I've covered it on the channel many times before, I will not be featuring it in this video, even though it probably is the most toxic. But in today's video, I will be focusing on some other toxic birds, as I'll be going through five poisonous birds from around the world. World. And for our first species, we'll be heading to North America, as we have the ruffed grouse. Now this bird is the most widely distributed game bird in North America, and is even the state bird of Pennsylvania. Because they can be found over such a wide range, there are many different recognised subspecies, and there are also many different interesting names for this bird. In some places they're known as drummers, or even thunder chickens. Surprisingly, they aren't called this just because it's a very cool name. But this in fact refers to the noise that the males make. The males have a signature drumming display, but this doesn't actually involve any drumming. The male will quickly rotate its wings back and forward, and when the air rushes beneath these wings, it creates a deep thumping sound. This sound is impressively loud, and can be heard up to a quarter of a mile away. These birds are most at home in mixed woodlands, and in these areas they can mostly be seen foraging on the ground. They typically feed on vegetation such as buds and leaves, but they also won't turn their beaks up at insects. This bird is often hunted, but due to its preferred habitat, it's not the easiest bird to track down. They spend most of their time in thick bush, and this means that it's very hard to locate them and get at them. But if you did manage to track down and shoot one of these birds, it may not be a good idea to eat one. Of course, these birds are eaten regularly, but in some cases it can lead to a very uncomfortable night. Strangely, these birds aren't toxic as a defense mechanism, but are almost accidentally toxic. This is because the ruffed grouse can digest bitter, often toxic plants, which many other birds can't handle. This means that they can not only take advantage of a food source that isn't touched by other birds, but also has the effect of making them slightly toxic. Ruffed grouse poisoning isn't a new phenomenon, as the first case was published in 1798. The symptoms of this poisoning can range from giddiness, all the way to blindness and paralysis. So even though this bird isn't naturally toxic, its diet can make it very dangerous. But for our next species, we can head to both Eurasia and Africa, as we have the Eurasian hoopo. Now of course, this bird is a very interesting looking bird, and it also has a very interesting name. Once again, its name isn't just to make it sound cool, but it actually has this name because of the noise it makes. <laughs> At first glance, this bird may look like a very strange woodpecker, but woodpeckers and hoopoes are actually part of entirely different orders. Its diet is almost exclusively made up of other animals, with large insects being its preferred prey. This chosen prey makes it very popular with many people, because they're more than happy to take down many animals that we view as pests. The hoopoe's strange beak comes in very handy, as it's used to prod around manure and soil to find large beetles and other insects. When hoopoes decide to nest, they often choose sites such as holes in trees or in stone walls. This of course is a rather lazy way to create a nest, because most of the work is already done for you. But as well as being very lazy, these nests can also be very open to predators. Hoopos have come up with a very interesting way of defending their eggs, and although it's not technically poison, it is chemical warfare. Under their tail feathers, these birds have a preen gland, which secretes oils and waxes that are used to both clean the bird and keep it waterproof. But during the breeding season, the female's gland becomes extra large and starts producing a weird dark brown fluid. This fluid smells like rotting meat, and is sprayed all over the eggs. This liquid contains dimethyl sulfide, and it is proven to be a very effective chemical defense against predators. This often leads to many predators being put off their eggs, and although it isn't technically poison, it is a very effective defensive strategy. But for our next species, we'll be heading to sub-Saharan Africa, as we have the spur-winged goose. Now although this bird is called a goose, it belongs to a group known as true ducks. It is related to both geese and shell ducks, and surprisingly it can hybridize with both of these creatures. It's been recorded hybridizing with the Egyptian goose, the swan goose, and even the common shell duck. In the wild, this bird is often found in open grasslands, seasonal pools, swamps, and river deltas, and in some cases they can be found at very high altitudes. In these areas, they mostly feed on aquatic plants, but of course will also eat insects and fruit. 
The spur-winged goose is a very large bird. They are the largest African waterfowl and are on average the world's largest goose. This title is contested though, as the Cape Barren goose is also a similar size. These birds are known for being very boisterous and aggressive towards other birds, and as you can probably guess from their name, they have spurs on their wings. They will often use these to jab other birds, and it's said that touching or being pricked by these spurs can result in a poisoning. Even though they live completely different lives and live in completely different parts of the world, the spur-winged goose and the hooded pitahui have a lot in common. They both have a taste for blister beetles, and these blister beetles are how these birds get their toxins. These beetles contain the toxin cantharidin, which can be extremely dangerous for humans to consume. The lethal dose is around 10 milligrams, and this can easily be contained in one goose. Luckily for these birds, they aren't hunted very often, and this means that spur-winged goose poisonings are very rare. So if you are hungry for some goose, you really shouldn't go for this bird. But for our next species, we can head to both Australia and Papua New Guinea, as we have the little shrike thrush. Now strangely, this bird isn't one species, but has in fact been split into many different species. These birds all look very similar to each other, and also live very similar lives. Even though these birds have a rather large distribution, still very little is known about them. Their preferred habitat might be part of the reason behind this, because they are often found in large forested areas. At first glance, this bird can look rather ordinary, and might not make you look twice. But what this bird lacks in looks, it makes up for in toxicity, as it's found in a very similar area to the hooded pitahui. You can probably guess that it gets its toxicity in a very similar way. It gets its toxicity from the insects that it eats, and these insects make up a significant portion of its diet. The poison that can be found in these birds is often referred to as BTX. Some of you may not recognize this name, but you will be aware of another creature that has this toxin. BTX can also be found in poison dart frogs, and these dart frogs also get their toxins in the same way. If you did choose to eat this bird, it could be the last meal that you ever have because these birds can contain more than a fatal dose. So even though this bird may look rather ordinary, it is surprisingly toxic. But for our final species, we'll be heading over to the highlands of Mexico, as we have the red warbler. Now this bird is arguably the most beautiful bird on this list, and it is definitely one of the smallest. They tend to reach a maximum size of around 14 centimeters in length, and even the largest weigh less than 10 grams. This bird has a few subspecies, but luckily they're quite easy to tell apart, as one has a white cheek and others have black cheeks. In its highland homes, this bird is primarily an insectivore and tends to hunt among the shrubs. Its size helps it to be very nimble in these areas, but this size also makes them very vulnerable to predators. The red warbler is often hunted by birds of prey, such as the sharp-shinned hawk. Although the red warbler is very nimble itself, it's often easily picked off by this predator. But luckily for these birds, some some predators have learned not to hunt the red warblers because they are a very toxic species. They contain neurotoxic alkaloids, which make them unpalatable and even very dangerous to eat. These toxins give them protection throughout their life cycle and also often means that predators choose not to hunt them. So as well as being a very beautiful little bird, it can also be a very toxic little bird. If you know of any other toxic birds, then let me know down in the comments below. But thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed. If you liked it, please leave a like and subscribe if you want to see more videos like these. But until next time, goodbye. Bye.